Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Suchit Anand, uh, and I'm very happy on behalf of the Godan Capacity Development Working Group to welcome you all to our webinar today. Uh, this webinar is on uh, effective data communications using data visualizations. This is a two-part webinar, and this first part is on infographics, and we are very happy to have three excellent uh, speakers with us today. Marjolin uh, Pijapals uh, from Studio Lacmos, Chipo Mesengini from the Godan, uh, from CTA, and Crystal Kenau from CTA. So they will all be sharing their perspectives and ideas on data visualization. So we are very happy to have all of them today. And I will quickly uh, welcome you all. Uh, for those of you who are new to Godan, I want to show, uh, welcome you all and share some of the activities we are doing. Uh, Godan supports the proactive sharing of open data to make information about agriculture and nutrition available, accessible, and usable to deal with the urgent challenge of ensuring uh, world food security. We are a global community, and we have over 580 uh, partners now worldwide, including national governments, non-governmental agencies, international and private organizations who are all committed to a common statement of purpose. So if you are new to Godan, please look at our statement of purpose and please uh, consider joining our initiative. Uh, the initiative focuses on building high-level uh, support among governments, policymakers, and interna international organizations uh, to build co cooperation and collaborations between stakeholders in this sector. We have a lot of uh, different working groups for those of you who are interested in different activities, and these are specifically created to share ideas, experiences, and ways forward on how we can all work together on open data that can be used for to solve these key uh, issues and challenges. So uh, if you look at our website uh, at godan.info, you'll find many of these working groups, uh, uh, from nutritional data working group to data ecosystem working group to soil data working group and many others as well. Uh, this particular working group, which today you are being, uh, you are all uh, welcome, is on the uh, capacity build development working group. Uh, this has been in, in uh, action nearly now one year, and it's open and free for everyone. So those of you who are interested, you will see the details of how to join. So you can uh, join this D groups, which is a mailing list, and we share all our ideas and collaborations through this mailing list. Mailing list as a primary tool for uh, building collaborations. So if you are new to uh, the Godan, I will definitely welcome you to consider joining this working group and be part of our community. So first, uh, I want to welcome uh, our first presenter. Uh, it's Marjolin Pinapples. Uh, she's a knowledge director and co-owner of Studio Lacmos. She helps organizations gain insight in complex issues and data sets by visualizing knowledge information and data in infographics. Uh, Studio Lacmo supports scientists, policymakers, and organizations in knowledge communications. I'm, and I would like to hand over to Marjolin to share some of her ideas and expertise in this uh, domain. So over to you, Marjolin. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be here today and uh, to be able to share uh, some of the things that we do at uh, Studio Lagmus. Um, and I hope uh, in 20 minutes I can give you a real quick uh, walk through uh, effective communication through data visualization. Uh, it's what we do every day. And um, although we don't exclusively uh, work on topics like agriculture and food, uh, I think the same basic principles count for every infographic uh, regardless of the topic. Um, I will show examples from our own uh, studio that we created with clients, so they'll be on different topics. Some of them will also be in Dutch, but I hope they will still demonstrate some of the basic principles of uh, infographic making and uh, also of, uh, of data visualization, how to choose the right um, uh, form for every uh, message. It's a bit strange for me to be talking to my webcam, <laughs> but I hope that all over the world, wherever you are, you will be inspired to, um, to take on um, infographic creation and knowledge communication yourself. So infographics have been quite hot for about the past five years, but actually infographics are much uh, older than that. So usually when I uh, talk to people about infographic making, I show them this image and I ask them if they know who this person is. She's actually one of the first infographic makers. Uh, she lived in the 19th uh, century, and it's Florence Nightingale. 
Uh, you may know her as a nurse in the Crimean War, and uh, she's uh, one of the people who uh, really brought healthcare to another level. But she was also an infographic maker, and this is one of the infographic charts uh, she made. It's actually it's a rose diagram. Uh, it has the form of, a, of a two uh, uh, roses, two petal, uh, uh, flowers with petals. And what you see here is actually she tried to um, show the causes of death in the Crimean War. On the right hand side you see 1854 and on the left hand side 1855. So it's a bit counterintuitive that you have to read this graph from right to left. And what you see is like uh, 12 uh, parts uh, that stand for the 12 months of the year in each of these graphs. And actually the gray, uh, the bigger ones, the gray ones, are not um, uh, uh, battle wounds or wounds uh, from, uh, from the war, but they're actually people that died from disease. And what she wanted to show uh, the big bosses uh, that run this, this war and run the military camps is that people don't die so much from wounds, which is the, the pinkish red color, but much more from disease. And in that t at the time people didn't really uh, know what caused disease uh, or that it was such a big issue but with this graph she made a real impact and she improved the healthcare at these battle uh, grounds uh, a lot so you see on the right hand side the gray parts of the of the flower are much bigger and on the right and on left hand side they're much smaller so you this is a great example of how data visualization can show something um, and, and make it very clear and also make clear what the impact is so when we sit with clients and we make infographics for them, we also always tell them that infographics, uh, infographics are visual stories, which means that they have to have like a head, a middle, and an end. They have to have a structure. And I will show you just some of the um, examples that, uh, of infographics that we made and also the different types of infographics because you can have infographics with like data, you can have infographics that show the structure of things, for example, and this is an infographic um, that we made uh, for the city of Arnhem to show how the hydrogen car worked. And in the middle you see the hydrogen car, you see like the anatomy of the car, and this is a, an example of an infographic that shows how something works and what it looks like from the inside. Um, a lot of infographics are uh, also processes. So this is a work in progress uh, and it's uh, about the food chain in the Arctic Sea, so the North Pole, um, and uh, uh, two different um, uh, food chains that take place there, one on the ice and one on the open sea. And uh, processes usually have like uh, arrows in them connecting different parts of the, uh, of, of the infographic with each other. So then you also have like timelines, for example, as an, as an infographic. This is an infographic we did for a museum uh, in the area of Utrecht in the Netherlands, showing the um, a timeline from like prehistory, like the, you have these, these floating islands, as we call them, six of them, and on the bottom left side you see the prehistory, and then it goes all the way into modern times. So this is like a timeline, but reinvented and showing all these different kind of things and things that people did at the time uh, to show them what happened there. Uh, you also have map infographics. I'm not sure how the resolution of your screen is, but uh, actually at the bottom of this flyer you see the map of, I think it's Mali, and um, um, in Africa and you see how Mali is connected to different countries. But you can have all these kinds of different infographics using maps and showing data on, on maps. So to um, create an infographic you have to think infographics, what we call it. So you have to really not just focus on what kind of design do I want to make or focus on the end result, but actually really clearly uh, look at the data and how you can make sense of that data. Unfortunately, this graph, it's the knowledge pyramid. I only have it in Dutch, but I'll explain it to you a little bit. What you see here is that uh, you have a knowledge pyramid from uh, where the bottom, like the base of the pyramid, consists of data then you narrow it down to information and then you narrow it down even further to knowledge which is the pink top of the pyramid. So what we do at Studio Lokmus is that we get data from clients and these are like the, the naked facts, uh, the processes, the, the, just a description without any context. And what we do is we analyze that data, sometimes in Excel, but when it's a process, it's just looking at a process and looking if it, it's really correct and logical and we bring order to the data. 
if you do that, data is not just a random strings of numbers or random uh, random text. It, it's structured and it's information. So that means that these, these facts, they get some meaning. Then there's a next step. You have to put it in people's heads to make it knowledge. So what you do is you add context or uh, you add experience or people add their own experience. And that way the information gets meaning and it's what's inside people's heads. So like the, the top of the pyramid is something that you cannot put in a package and transfer from one head to the other. You can uh, visualize the information but then it has to be presented to people in a way that in their own minds they make sense of it so that's what the knowledge pyramid is all about that you make from data you make information and for information you make knowledge and that way people understand something about the thing you want to share so we have um, like a process like certain steps six steps actually to create an infographic that's all that takes all these things into account it's also in Dutch, but you see like this is step one to six, and we start with one, of course, and it's always like a question. If someone wants to share something about a certain topic, or um, they want to answer a certain question. So we always start with um, what kind of information you want to share, for whom, uh, what's the target audience, what's the message you want to share, and explore that question. Then you gather the information, the data that's needed to answer that question and with us a lot of the time the client bring, brings in this data. And then what we do is analyze the data, look if it's all correct, what kind of messages or information or stories uh, are hidden in the data and we structure that into sort of a blueprint, that's number four. So when you get to number four you have a pretty good idea of what your infographic structure will look like and what kind of information and content should be in it and you'll make sure you have all the text and everything ready before you start designing, which is step five. And when you design it, 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 it will be looking nice and pretty and you use colors and, and fonts and everything like that. And when that's done, you have like a finished product that you can share across different platforms. So that's sort of a little bit about um, how we work, but actually I think how anyone can work who's creating an, an infographic. So what I want to go into now is talk to you a little bit more about uh, data analysis because actually that's maybe 80% of the creating an infographic is is not the design but actually analyzing the data, discovering the data, discovering the story and um, and making some sense of it. So this is well a tiny fraction of uh, something that clients would typically send us and maybe it's familiar to you it's uh, several uh, documents uh, several excel sheets with numbers we get usually also something like pictures or a visual content or icons that we might be able to use um, they usually ask us okay what how can you make sense of this what is the story how can we structure this so what we usually do quite simply is just look at the data and make sketches of it. Uh, sometimes we do with the traditional way with a pen and pencil. Sometimes we also use our programs for that. Um, but this is um, an example of an infographic. It's actually about uh, beer and health and alcohol and health. Um, and um, uh, we made these sort of wireframes, blueprints, sketches, whatever you want to call it, to make a, to get an idea of the of the information and how we would place it on, in this case, a, 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 a landscape page. So to get here, um, sometimes uh, it's better not to just start, or actually always it's better not to just start sketching, but to ask these essential questions first when you look at your data sets. So one of the first questions you should ask yourself is, what is this data about? And sometimes it's already clear from the beginning, but sometimes it's uh, so big or pe different people think, uh, have a different answer to this question, and it's good to be clear and on the same page about this. Another question you can ask yourself is, if I had to summarize all this data in one sentence, what would it be? So imagine you having all these reports and all these Excel sheets and you have to summarize it in one sentence. It's like, it's very difficult, but if you got this right, the whole creation of the infographic will go smoother than when you have all these different answers or you make it bigger. The goal is to make it small at first. So if you had to summarize it, what would it be? And then um, if you look at the data, if you could divide it into chapters, like chapters of a book, what would their titles be? 
So if you have this, then the one sentence you have is sort of the, could be the working title of your infographic, because that's what it's about. It's usually not a very sexy title, so you might want to change it later into something that's more appealing, but basically you can use it as a working title for your uh, infographic. The chapter titles that you made, they can be the backbone of your infographic. So if you want to make the sketches that I showed you before, these are the elements that should be in the sketches. And these could be like the maybe the, the, the subtitles of your uh, different, um, the different parts of the infographic. So for example, uh, what we do usually is sort of make um, like a wireframe or, um, or uh, uh, um, like we take a, um, an A4 leaflet, for example, if it has to be A4, and we sort of start to sketch, okay, here comes, here goes the title, here goes the source, um, and sort of give certain areas to certain topics, and then think about how we are going to visualize the information that shows this topic. So, for example, here we have a portrait uh, size um, flyer uh, or poster, and we put the title at the upper left corner uh, and the source at the upper right corner. Usually titles are upper left corner because the eye always goes from left, upper left, to bottom right. So you want to place the most important information in one of these two corners. The upper left is usually read the least, so you want to maybe put the, or the, either the least important information or at least not the most important information in those corners. So what we had, this is an example, for example, we put the title at the upper left, the source at the upper right, and then we have certain, th certain things like uh, urgency of the problem, the status quo, the trends, the solutions, and then a repetition of the urgency of the problem in this case, because that's uh, dependent on the goal of your infographic. You could put different things there, but we, in this case, really wanted to stress the urgency uh, of the problem. So this is an example of an infographic we did on uh, empty office buildings in Arnhem, where our studio is located, which is a big problem because there's many buildings that are empty, vacant, uh, nobody uses them, um, and they, uh, they get squatted or they deteriorate, and we wanted to show how big that problem is. So when you look at the previous um, uh, wireframe or blueprint, you see that in each of these uh, squares we put a part of the infographic. Like we put a map at, um, at the, just below the title, we put some pie charts and uh, bar charts next to it, and all of these elements uh, got a place. And it's, if you structure the information like that, it creates a very clear uh, and balanced infographic. So uh, actually, before I became uh, co-owner and knowledge director at Studio Lakmus, I was a researcher, um, not specifically in, in uh, neuropsychology uh, uh, or neurobiology, but my, uh, my co-partner actually is. But I do have um, a very big interest in biology. So I also, I'm always very interested in how we can use that kind of information to create better uh, graphics. And actually, the brain, the human brain, loves infographics because the human brain automatically, um, it, it's, it's to, to process visual information, it comes very natural to us. Like many of the visual cues, uh, you register subconsciously. Uh, and you can use that to make sure that the infographic you create, that the information it contains, that people really take it up. So I just want to walk you through some of the things we learned from uh, neuroscience uh, to make better infographics. So here you see six, six icons, six items. And I show you these because uh, from uh, neuroscience um, uh, research, uh, from the research, it turns out that the uh, short-term memory of humans can contain about five to seven different items. So uh, the average, I'd say, is six, which means that if you use five or six or seven uh, main items in your infographic and you repeat them, people will uh, um, keep that in mind, will remember that, and can use it when they read the infographic. But if you put in more, it quickly gets very difficult for the human brain to process it. What I mean by that is that if you have a pie chart like this, uh, even though the labels are all there, it's, it's, people cannot grasp it. Grasp it. It's too much information. So when you create, for example, graphs in your um, in your infographic, a line uh, chart or a bar chart or a pie chart, make sure you don't use too many different elements and too many different colors because we we cannot keep track of it. We see it and we forget it. 
if you use less, maybe you can can communicate less, but what you communicate, people remember. So what's also important is uh, to choose the right uh, graph. I have um, some of the graphs that you could use uh, shown here in this picture. You see a pie chart. Uh, next to it, you see the bubble graph, where um, the bigger the variable, the bigger the bubble. Uh, you see a stacked bar chart. On the upper right corner, you see a line graph, uh, and you see a um, small multiples graph on the upper uh, bot of us, uh, sorry, the bottom right side. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it because uh, if your screen is a bit dark, you don't see that the dots actually have different colors. But it's a way to show percentages um, in a different way, and you can like each dot could be like one uh, variable, or if the var uh, could be like one thing or one percent, and you could show the information that way. Um, choosing a graph. Uh, has consequences for the speed with which people understand your data. You can have different considerations for choosing graphs, like you might want to show a, a, a data set in a different way because uh, you want to stress something, or maybe you want to show something so that they understand it uh, more quickly, or you want to have variation, but it makes a difference. And I want to show you by doing a little test. So. Um, I want you to look at these three, it's a bubble chart, and I want you to look at these three bubbles. Like the area of the bubble has a certain number. So on the left, the biggest bubble, let's say it's 100. And if you'd have to fill in the next two numbers with respect to their area, what would the next two numbers be? I'll give you a few seconds to write it down. No cheating, because I cannot check on you. So these are the answers. It's 100, it's 50, and it's 10 with respect to the area size of the bubble. So don't worry if you didn't get it right, because when I do this in a group, then usually maybe half of the people, maybe not even half, have it right. That is because it's very difficult for our brains to estimate areas. So what you try to do, especially when, when it's circles, so what you try to do is put like the middle circle probably like over the over the left circle and try to see how much you have left. It's it's very difficult to do it. And usually we think uh, the numbers are smaller than they actually are. So it's not to say you could never use bubble charts uh, or never use pie charts, which which are also the same. Uh, yeah, the, the the part the part of the pie uh, is also an area, and it's difficult to read the actual numbers from the graph itself. But make sure that you do it for the right reasons. I have another one. A rematch for the people who maybe didn't get it right. So it, we have a bar chart here. We have three bars. And when we say the last one is 16, what are the first two columns? I'll give you a few seconds to write it down. And here are the answers. So it's 8, 4, and 16. And probably most of you will have this, right? Because it's very easy for the human brain to estimate uh, height especially when the bars are on a similar level, you just sort of compare how many times one bar can go into the other. So this is actually information uh, visualized that can be understood by many people uh, uh, correctly. So that's why bar charts are used a lot of the time. So I actually, I see I have about one minute left and I still wanted to talk to you about uh, the design, but I will go over that a little bit faster. Um, but um, I think the presentation will also be made available afterwards, so maybe you can always uh, look at it again. So design is very important. It's not the biggest part of the process, but it is very important because something that's professionally designed, um, people will uh, trust it more and they will uh, understand the information better. So some simple things to take in mind when you design an infographic is use a focal point. A focal point means that you have like one illustrative element that's bigger than the rest that sort of draws you in. And this is an infographic about protein and how it can be used in a bio-based economy. And we made sort of a header illustration with some infographic elements and some information inside that actually draws you in. And then you sort of drop down to the rest of the infographic and get the actual complexer information. Um, so it's really important to have something that sort of catches the eye. 
and this one as well on beer and body weights the man running with the icons like healthy icons and beer around him really shows it's about something with health something with beer and sort of the little bit boring table you're more likely to read it if you if you if your eye is drawn in with a focal point uh, in the infographic uh, structure and alignment is of course very very important because it really um, makes your infographic that much uh, clearer this is an example of I, I probably wouldn't even call this an infographic but if you look at the structure it's a mess everything is crossing each other it's very for the eye it's very uh, difficult to read and to see structure and to see the message. Uh, if we go back to this one, you see this one has a much clearer structure, a lot of white space which makes it more uh, um, easy to watch and get the information out. Structure doesn't have to be so rigid, this one also has a structure but it's more circular so you can play with that a little bit as well. Uh, uniformity is very important too. Uh, an example how not to do it probably be this infographic where you see like text has all different kinds of directions, different uh, type sizes, different fonts, different uh, styles of uh, illustrations like 3D, flat design, line work, it's a hot mess basically and if you use less colors and make sure that all the ink icons and infographics and fonts are like the same size or just a couple of different sizes it makes for a much uh, clearer infographic. So actually, that wasn't too bad, 22 minutes. <laughs> I really want to thank you for uh, listening. And uh, I will be um, turning off again and handing it over to uh, Suchi, I think. Thank Bye. you very much, Marjolaine. Uh, very informative and interesting presentation. I especially like the experiments you did. That was really interesting. So we will have questions for you. But at the end, uh, so yep. I will encourage uh, all those who are attending, please, uh, you'll, have, you'll see our chat window. And you can use that chat window to send in the questions and we will come back to the questions at the end of the presentation. So now we would like to hand over to uh, colleagues uh, Chippo and Crystal who are going to share some of their work they have been doing in CTA. So Chippo and Crystal, it's over to you. Okay. My name is Chipom Sengezi. Um, we're just going to share with you how CTA has been um, designing and developing infographics for its projects to show some of the outcomes and impact um, within the projects. Um, we have found that infographics um, make information easier to understand. They provide compelling visuals which are able to grab people's attention, which are able to convince people who would like to persuade um, to partake in some of the activities that we are involved in to become engaged um, with the with the projects that we are involved in. For example, this infographic that I have on the screen is for a project that's called the Agricultural Rural Development and Youth in Information Society project. And we use various design elements um, to showcase the um, impact that we have made using this project. So we use, for example, a mixture of text and a mixture of images. Um, we place um, percentages and figures. We place icon matrices, for example, to show, um, let's say here it says 87% of satisfied participants. So we use various design elements just to bring about the impact that this project has made. And we found that these have been very useful, um, particularly this project um, ended up winning um, a prize um, because we, we did a lot of marketing using this infographic. So you can see it goes on to talk about some of the activities that were taking place and so it became, it was a very, very visually engaging project that was aimed at promoting agriculture um, uh, activities for the youth. So this um, served our purposes very well. Another example that I have where we've uh, developed an infographic um, is around the issue of improving food security by supporting family farmers. So this infographic was designed um, to promote issues around malnutrition. So you can see that the various design elements like Ma Maloyen was um, talking about different sizes of circles to represent different um, figures. Um, you will notice here the orange circle here it shows you how big the problem is of malnutrition, how many deaths there are per year due to hunger and malnutrition as compared to other 
um, ailments and diseases. So what we really wanted to highlight and stress and advocate for was for improving food security by supporting family farmers and eradicating the problem of malnutrition. The same infographic went on to now give more figures. So there you've got various numbers which are meant to draw in the eye as well as icons that explain what is taking place. 48% of the total African population rely on agriculture. So this is designed to be memorable. When you see these numbers, it sticks in your memory and you remember some of these figures. Here we've got an infographic that we have been using in the data for agriculture project. Here we are trying to increase awareness as to the importance of data for agriculture. What questions do farmers ask that could possibly be answered through the use of data? So this is not necessarily an infographic that uses numbers or percentages, but rather uses images to explain the potential of data for agriculture. Um, for example, you see here we talk about open data satellites. This can be used to solve questions that farmers have pertaining to what the weather will be like, weather forecasting issues, soil condition issues, um, market um, prices, for example. So this is meant as an awareness uh, creation tool. Okay, this is another infographic that we have developed um, for the small island developing states. Um, so we know that small island developing states, uh, of which are the majority, of which the majority are members of the African Caribbean and Pacific group of states, face many challenges that are related to their demographics, social and geographic characteristics. So here, this is what we wanted to highlight to give more information about SIDS. Um, and their high dependence on food imports and the relative decline of their domestic agricultural sector. Yeah, I've got another example. Um, with the Gordon Action Project, we are working on the weather data theme this year and what we would like to do is to create awareness within um, government stakeholders on the value of weather data for agriculture. So we would we would use an infographic such as this to, to, to perhaps show a case study of um, how uh, weather data is being applied, how it is reaping economic benefits in different parts of the world. And we could use this as a tool for advocacy in our project. So CTA has um, had several and, and, and quite a large number of infographics that we have designed and um, we have now decided to bring in um, this skill in-house and we are actually building capacity within our staff on developing um, infographics for our projects and I'm going to hand over to my colleague here, Christelle, who has been working with Data for Agriculture team to design infographics to show impact, to show outcome, um, to create awareness on, on what data can do, on what our projects are doing on the ground. Um, so Christelle, maybe you can just give us a demonstration of some of the software that we use here at CTA to create our own infographics. And what I would like for you to note is that a lot of these graphics would seem to be complicated and uh, something a designer would need to do, you would need the capacity of a designer, but this is just to show you that you can actually come up with a good infographic that has all the necessary components. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Christelle. Okay, I'm Christelle Kenu from CTA and I'm going to show you quickly how to create infographic using PictoChat. So here is the website, PictoChat. So what you need to do is to log in and then you can have access to the dashboard. And here as you can see we have many type of op option like infographic, presentation or uh, poster. We are going to use infographic. So we have uh, two type of template, the free template and the pro template. but uh, 
we are going to use the free templates. So before there are, there are many type of uh, templates as you can see and just think about uh, which type of infographic you want to use and then choose the, the one you, you like and use it. For instance, uh, roadmap, timeline, timeline or comparison, and other type of infographic. So I'm going to use uh, this one. So you just need to click use template, and here it, it will show you the design of the, this, the template. Here you go. Yes. As you can see, for this template, we have different type of block. So the content I'm going to create is mainly for advocacy purpose. So I will go. I will just use two block and then delete some template, some block I don't need. So I'm going to delete some block and just have two or three for my infographic. So as I have already prepared my content, I'm going to change now the test on the infographic. So what you just need is to prepare your content and then you use the content and fill the form in PictoChat. So let me copy this one as the title of my infographic. So copy, just select and copy and you can double click on your infographic here to select the test and just paste. So directly you have your test here and you can change the size and the, co the color as well. Remember that you can change everything here as uh, the size and the, the the front as well and the color of the background everything you can you don't need to be a professional designer to to create this kind because you have the template who is already then you just need to fill and design your infographic so i'm going to delete this part just to select the the frame and delete it and i'm going i will i will use my test here to create the subtitle just select the test and copy and paste. So here in this block, I can move everything. As you see, I can put the test everywhere I want and make my design very nice to see. So I will move this one a little bit up. You can select many things together. So just selecting this and move it up. I can also move the size of my block and uh, then here I make it a little bit small. I will delete this block. So as we see, you can easily create the title of your infographic. And uh, we, are, we are going to continue to design our infographic. So let's uh, use our content to fill the template. So this infographic is mainly to, for communication purpose, uh, for, for instance, social media, but also to, for poster everything good to show to stakeholder. So I'm going to delete this text. Uh, and as is, as you see, it's very easy to to create a good content. We have also the possibility to change the pictures so you can directly upload your image your images or choose your pictures on the library. So I'm going to download some images like uh, yeah this one open and you just need to double click to make it appear here you can you can let me delete it 
Okay, here we go. So you, as you see, you can easily create your infographic and add some images and data and to make a good presentation. I'm going to delete this one. So you can also add other tool. So I'm going to the tool. Here we can change the, your test as well, change uh, the background of your infographic. And we also have different type of um, tool like charts, map as well. So with my content, I'm going to use, for instance, as you see, we can we have different type of uh, tool, like a vertical bar. So what you need to do here is just to fill your sheet or to directly import your data from your, your desktop. So we have different type of tool, like triangle triang bar, like uh, horizontal bar as well, line, uh, icon matrix, for instance. So I'm going to use this one to show you how I can create it easily. So Apple, you can directly fill your test here. Okay, let me delete this one. As you can see, and you insert your chart. So let me, I can also size this chart and make it bigger or more smaller. I can edit my chart and custom the color of uh, my icon as well to as well as change the, sh the, the ship of uh, the icon matrix here, I will choose men. So I will up update my chart. So as you can see, it's very easy to create a simple figure to show, for instance, the number of people who is involved in agriculture or other kind of thing. Here we go. Test and just add the test and do Okay. As you can see, it's very easy to to do. So the last thing you need, if you have your presentation or your infographic on the way you want, the last thing to do is now to download it, and you have different type. You can use the type of format you want and uh, size it uh, like you want. So I'm going to download it. And as you see quickly, you can have this kind of infographic to show and for different purposes. So this is uh, quickly how to create a nice infographic. And uh, uh, I want to thank you for listening. So there are various other types of software that you could use for for data um, for info developing your own infographics. Um, Pick to chart is just one of them, and it has a free pack a free um, component to it. Um, but <clears throat> There are others such as Google Charts, which are completely free that you could also take advantage of. And what we'll do is we'll share a list of uh, the different types of software that are available with the pros and cons on the Capacity Development Working Group. And then perhaps you also, um, if you join the working group, we can we can share how you are getting your message across. How are you getting your message heard? What sort of tools have you been using to share the data that you are generating um, in a in a manner that is uh, easy to understand for your audiences. Um, 
what this the purpose of this webinar was really just to show infographics as a as a data as a type of a data visualization. What we would like to do in the next webinar, part two, is to now look at uh, more complex uh, data visualizations that make use of different types of software such as your Tableau, such as Google Fusion uh, tables, e atlases, and we are going to feature IFPRI for that. Um, we have Sono Kim, who is the data manager there, and Nilam. Uh, Prasai, who is the data curator, and they are doing a lot of interesting work around data visualizations and the analytical side of it. So I just wanted to share that. Um, so if you are interested in getting more information on data as we build onto the topic, um, join us on the 14th of September for that part two of effective data communication using data visualizations. Thank you very much, Chipo, and uh, that is really a good overview of what we want to do next as well. So uh, even though the webinar is finished, we will make sure uh, we have already recorded the whole webinar, so it will be made available for all of you later, and those who couldn't make it today, it will be made available. But the most interesting thing uh, is also the various tools that are available. There are so many free and open tools which I, uh, which I am aware of. I will share those information as well to the mailing list so people can uh, test them, try to make use of them, uh, share your experiences, your inputs and ideas. And I especially liked uh, uh, the presentations in the beginning uh, when uh, uh, I think it was um, Majovic, you know, she presented some old, uh, you know, when we think about infographics, you know, people think about computer-based infographics, but the example she gave on Florence Nightingale and other examples which you know, which are very important as well because I remember in my uh, area when I was looking into health GIS that time I came across a, uh, a infographics that was basically from uh, more than 100 years back by someone called Dr. John Snow who was trying to map uh, the incidences of cholera outbreak in London you know so he just he basically used pen and pencil uh, paper to you know map those uh, you know how cholera was coming from basically from a stand pipe and he was able to visualize it and that uh, visualization helped to solve that much easier and had a much bigger impact than if he had used any other kind of tool so you know visualizations are very important it helps us to convey very important information uh, in a very uh, which which are very useful for human brains to uh, understand and easily so I was very happy to hear a lot of examples from other domains as well. So today it was really good to see all these examples. So any of you have questions, please uh, uh, put your questions in the chat. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I have one question uh, to uh, Majolin. Majolin, you know, from your experiences, uh, because you showed some examples of how you develop those visualizations. For example, you know, we are now working in this uh, global food security example, and you know, we have a kind of example of you know we have more than 800 million people who are suffering from malnutrition and hunger so these kind of things you know I, I think you know we, we, by using this visualization we can especially for policy makers you know how do you, you know, if you have this one slide and we want to get this message across you know how will uh, you know what will be your advice on how we can develop these kind of uh, important uh, aspects yeah, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Sometimes you just want to um, um, convey a message that's so important that the urgency must sort of splash from the screen. Mm -hmm. And I think with with things like um, uh, big numbers, but it's uh, but like one variable, like you're saying, 800 million people are suffering. How can you make mm -hmm. that visual? And it's always difficult to talk about it rather than show it. But there is one example yeah. that we use in our workshops. That's about a shark fishing. And uh -huh. what, what it basically is, it's an infographic where you see that, I don't know the numbers by heart, but you see first how many people are um, killed by sharks per year, right. which is seven mm -hmm. globally, it's really low. And then mm -hmm. you see the number of sharks uh, that, is being that are being killed by humans uh, per day. And it's an infographic where you have like six uh, human figures at the top, and then you have like, I think, hundreds and hundreds of sharks like uh, little icons of sharks and you just scroll down it and you scroll and you scroll and when you're scrolling sort of the the, the feeling grabs you that it's uh, like uh, it's a very terrible and big problem and when you have a big number and it's about humans and, and you say so many people are suffering sometimes just showing that number literally 
placing 800 million icons in a in a in like an animation or a scroll down screen could really show the impact because just saying the number it's we cannot grasp it as humans yes, it's too yes. big yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's important. And that's why maybe that's why we thought we have these uh, discussions in the uh, the webinar, so that we can uh, even after the webinar, I will appreciate if you all join the capacity development working group, and we can share some of these yeah, ideas sure. by email as well. So the question, yes, yeah, Sujit. Yep, yeah, please please go on, uh, Chipo. Um, they are asking how can you incorporate animations in the infographic? Is it good practice anyway? So, Marjolene, would you th would you say um, animations are good practice in an infographic? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it all depends on what your target audience is and how you're going to spread the message and what your goal is. So, the thing with animations is you cannot print them, of course. So, you need uh, the, the target group needs to be able to connect to a computer or needs to be in a, at a meeting where you can show the animation. That's something to keep in mind. But I think that animations are especially useful if you want to show before and after situations, for example, or a process across time. It's quite difficult to show it statically, like on paper. You get sort of a comic or a, a, like, a, like a, a steps next to each other, or it's sometimes difficult to show in one page a before and after situation without like showing everything similar like in a before and after situation and when you make it an animation you see the changes happening before your eyes and it can be very useful to do that and um, with online uh, more and more infographics are shown online you could just have a web page with text with static images and with an animation and combine all three so yeah I, I, I do think that animations are a very important tool in communicating information Thanks, Marilyn. Um, there's another question here. Well, this is a comment. You're saying that they would like to share good examples of infographics. If you visit Grow Intelligence, they are saying that they have good examples of infographics in the agriculture sector. Um, so that's from Menon. Menon, it would be great if you could also share that in the working group. So if you send um, if you send us a link to some of these infographics, and we can uh, discuss, we can actually build discussions around this topic. That would be really great. Um, Someone else here is asking whether there are any courses that you know of where you learn more on infographics. Um, I'll combine that with another question on any, are there any, are we planning to have any more training to build up on this? Um, when it comes to training from our side, we are planning to have a component on data visualization in an upcoming um, MOOC that we are going to run as part of the Golden Action Project. So if you would like um, to have a bit more on that, um, we will have a component of that in that training um, course. I do know that there are some free online courses also that provide training. Um, perhaps you could look at Coursera, for example. Um, Marilyn, do you know any other um, training available online? Yeah, I, I know of one. It's also uh, an uh, open online course. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure when it will be given next, but I know they do it regularly. And it's from the, I don't have a link, but I know it's from the Knight Center for Journalism in the Americas. And they have like a, several data visualization and infographic uh, MOOCs um, uh, every year and I actually took one like, a couple of years back just to because I was really interested to see what it was like and it was very much fun because you have these you form groups with people and you can discuss them because it, a lot of people follow it but you have like these smaller groups with five to ten people and you discuss it and if you put in the effort you can actually learn a lot it's from the Knight Center for Journalism in the Americas Thank you. And then Jay Gray is asking if we have, um, do we have other tools? Are we going to show any tools that uh, make use of JSON structured data, for example? Um, you are asking, do you have better tools than um, the, the ones that we have shown for these infographics? So I, I would say that if you, if you join the next webinar, we are going to show more software like Tableau, for example, that uh, IFPRI is using. And perhaps you can get ideas on how you can use it with your, with your own data. Um, so we are looking at that in the next part of this, of this um, series of webinars. But many are asking for the slides. We will make these available. Um, 
to you through the capacity development working group so if you are a member we will definitely send those through and as well to all those who registered for this webinar. Myelin, can I give you this one, the last minute, the last question. <laughs> How can one create an infographic with two factors and nine variables of data? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So actually what I'm hearing is how can you create an infographic with a really small data set, right? That's a, I mean, it's a small data set, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what's important is to, uh, an infographic is not just one graph. So if you have one graph or one small data set, try to find the story in that. Like maybe you could compare it to the year before or maybe you could compare it to different sectors. Um, it has to have some sort of context to add meaning to it. So if uh, if you just have the one graph, you just have part of the story. So that's how, how when clients come to us and they have a small data set, we always try to ask them these types of questions that I also showed in the presentation to see like why is this so important, what's the message behind it and sometimes you could add a little bit of data or sometimes it's a process you could add um, because an infographic needs to have like a head, a middle and a tail, it has to have some sort of storyline in it and just one graph won't cut it. So if you have a small data set try to ask as many questions as you can about that data set and then something will float up and you will get your story and you can make an infographic out of that. Okay, thank you so much for all your questions. There are, if you have any more questions, please kindly send them through onto the working group. Um, I have two remaining ones. I will share these on the working groups and would love to hear also from all the members contributing your answers and your experiences on particularly here people asking how the impact of these in, is the evidence of impact of these uh, infographics so let's take that to the working group for further discussion yeah thank you very much chipo uh, uh, marjolaine and crystal uh, all all our speakers for their sharing their excellent presentations and informations with everyone Greatly appreciated, and I really hope you know uh, we will have the continued discussions in the working group. So I welcome everyone to join the working group if you have not yet joined our working uh, capacity development working group. Uh, I want to also specifically thank CTA who are hosting the webinar, uh, especially Chris and uh, Chipo and colleagues there who made all arrangements for the uh, for this webinar and making this possible. So as Chipo already mentioned, we will have a second uh, webinar continuing these discussions on the infographics because we believe it's an important topic. So please send us your ideas. If you want to see something uh, specific, you are more than welcome to put that ideas in the mailing list so that we can uh, fine tune the future webinars accordingly. So please uh, 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 email those ideas to our mailing list. So once again, I want to thank everyone who joined today's webinar and we will make sure uh, the recordings are made available for the uh, wider community later uh, and we look forward to seeing you all soon uh, in our next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you.